Hey, how's it going guys? It's Merc. Welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are all having a good day as always. I know it's been a while since I've made a video and I do apologize. I've been busy with uh, some other stuff on my second channel as well as some stuff IRL. So I haven't really had time to get around to making a video. But uh, today's video is going to be something similar to what we uploaded last week to keep anybody updated. If you guys do not know what's going on with the whole rainforest. Uh, basically the Amazon rainforest has been on fire for the past three weeks. And we barely were hearing about it till recently. Now, this is something that's pretty scary because um, it was almost like it was hidden and media wasn't talking about it at all. When something little happened in Notre Dame, people were talking about it crazy. And yet now something that is very crucial to Earth survival as well as our survival uh, is not being publicized. Now, I read an article that I thought was pretty interesting. It's been going around. It's by Matt McGrath. And we're going to read this article and check it out. And basically, it reads 12 years to save the planet. Make that 18 months. So we got 18 months to save the planet. Not technically, you know, not saying the world's going to end in 18 months, but it's going to take some time for us to pretty much reverse the damage that has already been caused by our gas, you know, um, greenhouse gases, emissions from cars, etc. So we're going to go ahead and get into it. Do you remember the good old days when we had 12 years to save the planet? Now it seems there's a growing consensus that the next 18 months will be critical in dealing with the global heating crisis, among other environmental challenges. Last year, the intergovernment Last year, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reported that to keep the rise in global temperatures below 1.5 Celsius this century, emissions of carbon dioxide would have to be cut by 45% by 2030. But today, observers recognize that the decisive political steps to enable the cuts in carbon dioxide <clears throat> but today, observers recognize that the decisive political steps to enable the cuts in carbon to take place will have to happen before the end of next year. The idea that 2020 is a firm deadline was eloquently addressed by one of the world's top climate scientists speaking back in 2017. The climate math is brutally clear. While the world can't be healed within the next few years and may be fatally wounded by negligence until 2020, said Hans. The sense that the end of next year is the last chance to loon for climate change has become clear all the time. I am firmly of the view with that the next... 18 months will decide our ability to keep climate change to survivable levels and to restore nature to the equilibrium we need for our survival, said Prince Charles. So why are the eight next 18 months so important? The prince was looking ahead to a series of critical UN meetings that are due to take place between now and the end of 2020. Ever since a global climate agreement was signed in Paris in December 2015, negotiators have been consumed with arguing about the rulebook for the pact. But under the terms of the deal, countries have also promised to improve their carbon cutting plans by the end of next year. One of the understated headlines in last year's IPCC report was that the global emissions of carbon dioxide must peak by 2020 to keep the planet below 1.5 Celsius. Current plans are nowhere near strong enough to keep temperatures below the so-called safe limit. Right now, we are heading towards 3 Celsius of heating by 200, not 1.5. As countries usually scope out their plans over fire and 10-year time frames, if 45% carbon cut target by 2030 is to be met, then the plans really need to be on the table by the end of 2020. The first major hurdle will be the special climate summit called by UN Secretary General Antonio, which will be held in New York on 23rd September. Mr. Guterres has been clear that he is only wants countries to come into the UN if they can make significant offers to improve their national carbon cutting plans. This will be followed by COP25 in Santiago, Chile, where the most important achievements will likely be keeping the process moving forward. But the really big movement will most likely be in the UK at COP26, which takes place at the end of 2020. The UK government believes it can use the opportunity of COP26 in a post-Brexit world to show that Britain can build the political will for progress in the same way the French use their diplomatic muscle to make the Paris deal happen. If we succeed in our bid to host COP26, then we will ensure we build on the Paris Agreement and reflect the scientific evidence accumulating now that we need to go further and faster, said Environment Secretary Michael Gove in what may have been his last major speech in the job. And we need at COP26 to ensure other countries are serious about their obligations and that means leading by example. Together we must take all steps necessary to restrict global warming to at least 1.5 Celsius. So we need to make a change as far as what's going on in the next 18 months as a nation and everybody across the world, all the nations across the world. Do I think this is going to happen? I think that they will do it to an extent. But like I said, uh, sometimes a lot of these dudes, they are driven by money and giving up that money is kind of hard for them even if it means their own survival it's still you know ugh, you just can't let go of that money that money's like ah it's just right there you know if you if you had the option to breathe or have you know a fat stacks in your pocket you're gonna take those fat stacks you know what i mean at least you die rich no but in all seriousness this is pretty scary and pretty dangerous but i mean the way i look at it this is just continuing to get worse and worse 
I don't think that they're going to make any changes that are going to be crazy. I think it's just going to continue to get bad, unfortunately. And it sucks because a lot of the generations in the future are probably not going to be able to experience life here on Earth. And, um, you know, so live in the moment is all I can say. This thing's going to get blown over pretty soon. People are going to start forgetting until something else drastic happens or until we are all cease to exist. It is unfortunate, but hopefully something does change. I'm hoping that it does, but I'm thinking at the same time that nothing's probably going to happen. So I guess we'll see. I will leave the link to the article down in the description below. Make sure you guys go check it out. I will leave the link to the article down in the description below. Make sure you guys go check it out. Give it a read. And if you guys would like to read more of it because I didn't finish all of it, then you guys are more than welcome to. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I've been Hanson Mark, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.